um, and welcome to Outwards. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Susan Clamp. I'm assistant head teacher here at Outwards um, and a cohort one specialist for the NCTM and, and the North Mids and Peaks Maths Hub, as well as being a professional development lead for the NCTM. Um, I've been on my mastery journey in, in about fourth year now, um, so been quite a lot of experience in my third year of being a specialist and working with different schools to help them to develop maths in their schools. Um, so first of all, why are we here this morning? So we're here this morning, we're going to be watching two Shanghai teachers who've come over. Donna and I, who is a cohort two specialist over here, uh, went to Shanghai in September. Why, why are the government funding this? Um, so when we're looking at our maths as a country, our maths results haven't been good enough. So we've been looking at places where they are getting really good maths results consistently, Shanghai, Singapore, and thinking what do they do with their maths that we don't do over here? And then looking at how we can learn from what is going on, which is what our trip was to do with, um, and looking at their maths um, into that part. So, what does education look like in Shanghai? The teachers are very similar to us, they want their children to be happy, creative, to enjoy their learning, um, as they go along. Their children are very similar to our children. They do misbehave, they make mistakes, they get distracted, they are children. It's not, I know we have an image of what we think their children behave like, but they are very similar to our children. Um, the difference I would say is that while we obviously deal with our behaviour management and engagement more in class, if there's a child who's distracted, who isn't getting things, the teacher stays very focused on their lesson and deals with it after class. Um, so that child might get a detention or they might bring them in over lunch and they, they don't distract from their lesson, uh, whereas we obviously deal with it as it happens. Okay. Um, there's a lot of development through research, collaboration, reflection, um, and everything that they do is there to develop their own professional development and others. They work very collaboratively um, as they work on their maths. Their schools are very, very big thousands of uh, children in a primary school. Their classes, they think our classes are very small, <laughs> uh, with 30. They have 40 is about average, but they can have over 50 in there. And their classrooms are really not much bigger than ours. They're just sat in rows and they just kind of cram them in there. Um, and their lessons are 35 minutes long. Um, this is the kind of the taught part of the lesson. The theory behind this is that children can't concentrate for longer than 35 minutes. So they do 35 minutes, a break, 35 minutes, a break <coughs> all the lessons, not just for maths. Um, and then the practice comes at another time. They have kind of a study time in the day and the children work through lunch and things to do practice um, rather than in the taught part of the lesson. Um, the teacher's subject knowledge is really evident in their lesson design. So when we're looking today at the lessons, you want to be looking at the pedagogy of that maths and how they unpick the maths as we go through. So it's very small steps and they, everything they do has got a reason. They don't just pick something because it was easy. They have a justification in their mind as to why they've picked everything. The advantage they have over us is that they are just maths teachers. Ho is teaching the year three lesson today is actually also a computer teacher but generally they have a specialism and they just focus on, on that, which obviously we have a harder job uh, trying to juggle all of our subjects. Um, in Shanghai and in China, they have a national textbook that they use as a tool to help with them with their planning. Uh, this is reviewed often. Uh, the teachers at the end of the year give feedback and the textbooks are changed according to what they do. They are not pre-planned lessons. It is more a progression of skills. Um, and some ideas of activities that then they unpick. And that while we're in Shanghai, we're in different schools and even in different classrooms, and you can see actually that technically the same lesson in a textbook is not the same in how it's delivered and the steps that that teacher develops for the children that they teach. They have regular collaboration. So as part of Mass Hub, um, we work with six schools for a year and create a teacher research group so that we can be, um, they've come to watch me teach, we look at different lessons, pull them apart, looking at different skills. And they do that a lot where they watch a lesson and discuss it. While we were in Shanghai, um, we taught lessons. So we planned it. Then we um, explained to everybody what we were planning and they gave us some feedback. Then everyone came to watch the lesson. And then again, there was feedback after that lesson. So it's very collaborative and they're very good at saying, 
oh no, I would have done this, or why did you do that, and questioning each other so that they're getting the best um, out of it for the children. They have really carefully crafted steps of progression um, with variation in each lesson. So um, this means that as they go through, every little step is planned for. It builds on the previous knowledge, and this is the same as it goes through a sequence of lessons on a unit. Um, I'll come to variation in a moment, but they they think about how they present structures and make sure they're exposing all of the maths. Um, So they highlight all of the concepts as they go through. They don't deviate from the main point of the lesson. So sometimes I know our children will give us an answer and we'll kind of discuss their ideas. They know what their teaching point is and they stick to it. They don't go off at a tangent, even if the children almost try and lead them there, because they have, especially in a 35-minute lesson, they are very um, tight on their focus. Connections. If there's anything I would say today, connections is a, is a big word. They're always making connections. There's nothing left to chance. Everything is connected, connected to previous knowledge, how things all connect around it, which is how the children become so fluent. And their math skills were very impressive when we were there. And it is because that they really understand the maths. They've not just been taught in a rote way. They understand what they are doing. And they become very fluent because they understand how everything is connected. Um, It's drawn out and they're always drawing their children's attention to it as they go through. Um, They are explicitly taught facts. So um, the year three lesson uh, you'll see today is multiplication. In the sequence of lessons that Herb has taught, she's been teaching multiplication. So she did the four (coughs) times table followed by the eight times table followed by a connecting lesson on the twos, the fours and the eights. And as she's done that, she's looked at Um, well if I know 3 times 4 I can add 4 or I can take away 4 this fact is double, this fact, this is half and it was all very very sequenced through as she's done a whole lesson on that and every connection was made, if I know my 2 times tables I can find my 4 times tables and all of that was explicit and as she went through the lesson she was then building a rapid recall as she went through and then um, I believe she'll start the lesson again today with a little review trying to get the times tables facts coming through So it's taught very explicitly and then built so that there's a rapid recall of facts. Um, Another uh, huge part is the concrete pictorial uh, to the abstract representations, which I know is taken off now over here much better. Um, I think what they do really well is they don't choose a piece of equipment or a picture just because all that will fit it in. Anything that is chosen is there to reveal the structure of the maths. It is not used, um, I know sometimes, especially historically, it's, um, or we can give our lower ability the cubes, uh, because that will help them. Everything is there to reveal a structure in the maths, um, and it's very tightly linked, concrete, the pictorial, to the abstract maths, so that they can understand the maths, and then they take away that quite quickly. So once they've revealed the understanding, that's taken away, rather than, continually giving them that as a crutch to support their maths. Okay. Uh, there was a much, much greater emphasis on children really understanding the mathematics, which is where mastery uh, comes from, really. It's, mastery is for every child. There will be a different depth of level that the children understand to, but mastery is about children really understanding the maths, not just doing something because we've said, look, you just do it like this and then copy, but understanding that maths, how it connects to other <coughs> things. Um, they always um, use correct mathematical language. Um, so there's been a lot of, um, when they've been in the multiplication this week, factor products being used very regularly. What's the product as they go through? Um, and they're very insistent on full sentences when they give their answers. And you'll see today they um, use a key sentence or a stem sentence, which is on the board, and the children will fill blanks in to make sure that they are speaking correctly. And after a while, the children start to just use that language very naturally because they're getting used to it. You can see it over the week that they've been here, how that's developed. Um, misconceptions and difficult points are planned for. Um, so they know um, things that will come up. They know th- I, the misconceptions that children normally have and they make sure that they've planned in almost a point to trip them up in the lesson and highlight to the children why that is a misconception and highlight that misunderstanding so that the children understand it as they go. Okay, so when we are looking at um, what we can learn from Shanghai, it's really important to point out 
but we are obviously very different cultures and um, obviously a lot of you are new to mastery and um, this model which I'll talk through in a moment but we are not saying today that when what you're going there you need to replicate exactly we are from different cultures um, and the way that the Shanghai teachers teach there are some things uh, that maybe you go oh I'm not sure about that for example um, because they are so into keeping their whole class together and they, they are not as worried about their higher and lower ability in the same way that we focus on them in a lesson, um, sometimes they'll give them a question and they'll be going around and they're checking all the time that everybody's kind of understanding and with them, but some children might be finished and sat, and to them that's fine. And obviously that is not something we're saying, because it, it's, it's not what we find acceptable in England, and it's not what we're saying this is what the lesson looks like. So it's important when you go in to be focusing on these five parts and focusing on the journey of the mass through. So there are little things culturally that you'd be looking at and you go, oh, not sure about that. So we're not saying this is exactly how the lesson would be taught in England. I know my mastery lessons and I know Donna's mastery lessons don't necessarily look like that, but we've taken key parts to help our children develop the maths. Is that okay? Uh, the second thing I would say is it's, I would... Forget that they are year three and year five children. I would just be focusing on the maths and what they're learning in that part if you're going to get the most out of this morning. Has anyone got any questions on that? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you've got in front of you this sheet here, which you could fill in now. Um, I'm just going to kind of give a brief overview of these, uh, of the five big ideas. So um, when the NCTM have been doing all this research and looking at what can we learn from these countries. They've packaged it up into the five big ideas to help us to see what's really important when we're talking about mastery. So the first one, uh, coherence. Small connected steps are easy to take. Um, this is um, always having a sequence of lessons, so each one is a little step after another. But this is also really clear in lessons, that there are small steps. And you sometimes start a lesson and you think, especially if you're watching the Shanghai teachers, you sometimes think this is really simple and really easy, but it's getting the proper, uh, a real understanding and depth of that concept so that they can then go deeper. And sometimes if you look at the progress um, in the types of questions from the beginning to the end of the lesson, you think, wow, we've really come a long way, but it's a very slow step. And each question builds on the next question and is there for a reason to build on that knowledge. Okay. Um, next, mathematical thinking. Um, this was, is probably an easier one to be looking for. An important thing with this, uh, the answer's only the beginning. And when I've been talking to the teachers this week, sometimes they're saying, the answer's here, the children, it's very easy for the children to find the answer, and they know it's easy to find the children to find the answer. It's not so easy for the children to explain why that's the answer and to properly explain why. So the answer's only the beginning is quite an important part with our mathematical thinking. Um, and thinking, uh, they, they'll be asking why, how do you know, give me the reason, and being clear with that, and also, again, coming back to the full sentences, ensuring that they're talking in full sentences, and being very clear with their answers. Okay. Um, the third part is fluency. So this can be related to number facts, time tables, facts, knowing all of those things, but fluency is bigger than that. Fluency is, if you really understand... Um, a concept that you can then apply that knowledge to different types of problems and in different ways. So if you understand something, you can apply it to different problems, even if you've not seen that kind of problem before, so to an um, unfamiliar problem. And that would be a fluency of that understanding. So it's more, it does include number facts, but it is more than that as well, looking at applying that knowledge. Um, representation and structure, we talked about a little bit um, before. So concrete, pictorial, abstract. Um, and these are really used, the structure of the maths. They are used to highlight specific um, items to do with the maths and, again, to make those connections between. Okay. The fifth um, part is variation, which I will only give you a brief overview of because variation is probably the biggest and there's a lot of depth into that understanding. There are different types of variation, procedural and conceptual. Um, an example with conceptual is um, highlighting essential features of what something is, what something isn't, showing it in all kinds of different ways. 
uh, what's the same between this, what's different, and highlighting those things. What's the same, what's different is quite a key question in between those ones. Um, I know today um, in the fractions lessons we're about to see that the representation is, there's not lots of different ways of representation, but I just wanted to show you, just going to go quite quickly, these are some slides from uh, earlier in the week, so you can see it was represented as apples, and we were looking at parts and holes, um, and then as squares with the fractions, uh, this was all in one lesson, as a metre, and how we would divide our metre as a fraction, uh, so looking at it not just always as a pizza or always as chocolate, just showing it in different ways, um, as a bar model, split into our tenths, um, and also looking at different squares, um, looking at swans, with our five swans being the whole, um, a hexagon, and making sure those colours were all different, um, and going through. So you can see that kind of looking at it in a completely different way. So even in that, that was from one lesson, looking at those <coughs> in one different way. Um, procedural variation is sometimes the very small steps in between questions. Um, this is from yesterday's lesson when they were looking at equivalent fractions. Um, and you can see thirds into six, fourths into twelfth, quarters into twelfths, fifths into twentieths. And she'd only really been looking at the connection of where we times by two, times by three, doing the same to numerator and the denominator. And we'd had uh, paper folded to see why they were equivalent fractions.